Hello, welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be talking about the early third era for the Golden Empire. So, um, if you haven't seen the first video, you should go ahead and see that before you watch this one. That'll explain the context, the rise of the Golden Empire, and now we're going to be talking about um, the early third era, which is its decline. So, during the early parts of the Third Era, the Golden Empire was in its height of power. And specifically, in the middle of its um, Golden Age. The economy was prosperous, many of its people were rich, and even the peasantry were buying luxury goods. There was also a great deal of travel between the Empire because of its vast conquests. So, you can see here, by the beginning of the... Um, third era you can see how big the golden empire is and um you, you're gonna actually see that it'll be even bigger here in a minute so during this time the golden empire was under the control of ilajash who was the sheyuka actually was sheikua of the golden empire so he wanted to expand his empire to the eastern coastline so, he went to war with the Kingdom of Hilland in 23 of the Third Era, which was struggling for many issues. After several years, the Kingdom of Hilland agreed to be a vassal to the Golden Emperor. However, many problems began in Hilland as various people used the mountains and hills of Hilland to attack and deal a great deal of damage to the Golden Empire. There was also trouble at home because when Elizash died, the Empire was going through a regency since there was no Emperor, and thus, after some raising tensions and near civil war, the Regency Council elected Haragasa to be the Sheikua as they looked for an Emperor. So you can see that the Sheikua um, thing is starting to affect the um, Golden Empire now. And so they basically elect a Sheikua so that they could look for an Emperor. So, after the conquest of Hilland, the Golden Empire prepared for a huge conquest. To the north of the Golden Empire's territories, in the, in the, to the north, lay the Narakunin Empire. And so, after an ultimatum from Haragasur, wait, let me read that name again. Haragasur was rejected. He invaded in 53 of the Third Era. His soldiers quickly swept through and took the land very quickly. However, Chorbo really wasn't in the conquest, it was in the aftermath, as the Golden Empire would be um, attacked on many sides. And so you can see here that this is what the Golden Empire looked like at its peak of power. The um, basically brown looking color, the dark one, is... Um, is basically like spheres of influences. So whilst the Golden Empire didn't have direct control, they did influence it. And here is the kind of conquest of the um, Narakunin Empire over here. And then you've got these um, dark yellow sort of things. And these are vassals and loosely controlled states. And then the rest is very heavily under the control of the Golden Empire. So the Eastern War is the name for a series of conflicts that happened between the Golden Empire and various states. In the East, in the First Eastern War, <clears throat> a series of Algamoran states, along with something known as the Haxanian Empire, along with allied with each other and defeated the Golden Empire in the Battle of Gemismund. After the battle, the Golden Empire was forced to abandon their lands north of Hilland and things stabilized. However, after some more raids, another Eastern War would happen, this time being directly from the Haxonian Empire. The Haxonians defeated the Golden Empire, being outnumbered 5, one to, five, five to 1 in the Battle of Rolich, and forced the Golden Empire to abandon Hilland by 11th... by 11th... <coughs> by 113 of the Third Era. So, after the losses in the East, the Golden Empire faced another attack, this time from the North, a group of migrating peoples known as the 
Ashkenan people got into a conflict with the Golden Empire. Eventually, in 142, the Golden Empire allowed for the Ashkenan people to rule in the north as long as they agreed to be vassals. The Ashkenan kingdom would go on to do the opposite and abandon the Golden Empire as an overlord. Now, the Golden Empire accepted this largely for one, they had, be they had built a series of walls and defenses along the north, which basically removed the excuse of needing a um, barrier to the north. You see, if you watched my previous video, you would have seen that one of the reasons why they conquered that from the uh, declining of Carthan Empire is because they wanted to protect the north. However, now, after they've built these series of walls and fortifications, that, that at this point, the costs of maintaining that area were just too much for them. And another reason is because the emperor felt that the Sheikhu at the time, Teres Migar, was plenty to murder him, so he had much more pressing issues with him at home. And you can see how the Sheikhu thing can be very good, but it also has some major issues. So after the loss of the Ashkenan kingdom, things began to stabilize for the Golden Empire, and they were still a powerful foe to face. For example, when the Ashkenan kingdom invaded from the north, the Golden Empire managed to defeat them in the Battle of Teravin Mountain. This happened in the year 179. However, things would change when, in 232 of the Third Era, the Emperor, Zhesh IV, died unexpectedly. This led to the Sheikhua Ezagir to appoint Zhefzhar the first of the first as Emperor. However, Zhefzhar was the younger brother to Ezevmin, who, Ezevmin, <coughs> Ezevmin, I think, I always have a hard time pronouncing some of these names, Ezevmin, who marched an army to claim his throne. The Gold and Civil War began where Ezevmin would be defeated and forced to retreat into the Timberlands. And so right here on this map, you can see, like, the declining state of the empire and this is at what it looks like at this point so you can see they lost the north they lost the east and now at this point they're having a civil war in the timberlands which is this huge area right here the timberlands is one of the largest parts it's kind of it goes from the east of goldland sort of all the way to the west of the rock of hillland and so it's not just like geographies like split because if you go towards the west you're going to start seeing less and less forest and more and more mountains and hills and same thing with the east so <clears throat> the civil war had many stages but to simplify ease of mind ease of mean used the timberlands to launch attack after attack against his brother eventually around 22 years after the war began ease of mean was killed in a raid However, another war would begin in the Timberlands, known as the Prazita, which was a series of conflicts where the supporters of Ezefmine's claim and his bloodline would continue to exist. Now, when I say bloodline, I mean his descendants, who they believed had a much more legitimate claim to the throne than the emperors. The Praziti the Prazita would last for over a hundred years and would result in the deaths of millions of people in the Timberlands, since this is where the Prazita took place at. So with the Golden Empire when the Golden Empire entered into the three hundreds, things were not looking good. The despotism as of Rockfort had launched frequent attacks, and when the Golden Empire sought the counterattack, they were defeated every time. Eventually, the Golden Empire was forced to concede major territories to the despotism of Rockford, though they were able to gain this territory back after the death of the des despot Mies Gavel. Mies Gavel. In 332 of the Third Era, many of the tribes in the Timberlands formed an alliance and managed to break away from the Golden Empire. In response to this, the Golden Empire sent its army to crush the rebellion, However, the, gold arm, the Golden Empire's army was killed off in a series of disasters, and then it was slaughtered in the Battle of Acorus. Ak Afterwards, the Golden Empire agreed to the <coughs> allowed to the tribes to have a certain level of independence as long as they pay tribute to the Golden Emperors.
So, um, throughout the next hundred years or so, the Golden Empire's continual stagnation would make it weaker. It was slowly being chipped away, which... <laughs> it was slowly being chipped away, such as in the east, but further attacks led to it eventually losing even more territory. This would come to a head point when the Golden Empire ended up in a war with a place known as the Kingdom of the Velvets in the year 484 of the Third Era. To summarize, they were completely devastated and the loss began the em Golden Empire's collapse as it started to lose all of its eastern territories, including the Timberlands and thus ending the Empire for good. The Golden Empire for good. The first one. What do I mean by the first one? This, this isn't it for the Golden Empire. Sure, it's it for the um golden, the first Golden Empire, but its successor, the Kingdom of South Gold, would manage to solidify itself into Goldland and its remaining territories, and it would go on to wage war with the Velvets and its neighbors, and eventually it would go on to create the second Golden Empire. However, to heavily oversimplify the Second Golden Empire, it would be a mess. And nothing would really culminate from the um, part from Goldland until the Third Golden Empire would be established, which would prove just as, if not more, successful than the first. I appreciate each and every one of you that spends a good time of your day to uh, watch this video. Thank you all for watching. So, yeah, here's the normal, you know, talk. Like, subscribe. I'd really appreciate if you could comment and check out my community posts. And if you want to, you could even join my Discord as well. Um, I'm just here. The reason why I want to do that is because interacting with those who comment and those who talk about stuff in my comments that are related to the video is really interesting. For example, I really do love answering questions and other things of that sort, so if you got any or anything else to say that's related to the video, please say so in the comments. I will always reply. That's it. I hope each and every